Do you hate sanding your projects after they come off the CNC? I know I do. So today I'm gonna share a technique with you that has saved me so much time, so much time. By the end of this video, you'll never look at sanding the same again. All right, for this demonstration of this technique, I'm gonna be using this heart in honor of Valentine's Day coming up. Not a difficult project, but it will demonstrate this technique well. I'm using Carbide Create for this. You can use any CAD software. We're gonna go over to Tool Pass and we're gonna select Pocket. We're gonna select this inner area right here because this is the area we wanna pocket. So again, the goal is to virtually eliminate any need for sanding in this area and do this toolpath as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna select our bowl and tray bit. But the important part for the toolpaths is our tool diameter is three quarters of an inch. So that is important because our roughing step over needs to be 50% of this number. So, all right, so our step over is in here, 0.375. Now this is gonna hog out a lot of material. This is really aggressive. So it's to remove as much material as quickly as possible. Our depth per pass, uh, I'm actually going to increase this. I go to 0.1. This, these are the setups for my Shapeoko Pro. This is fairly aggressive. Not every CNC machine will be able to do this. But the depth per pass does not really matter. I mean, I could put in anything in here. What really matters is this step over. So I'm going to do 0.1 depth per pass. And then we're going to increase these. Again, these are fairly aggressive but it's my roughing tool pass and it all makes sense here in a second. Now we'll go over here to start depth and max depth. Now I want this concave area to be a maximum of 0.5 inches. I don't wanna take my roughing pass all the way down to the bottom because then I'm gonna be left with a rough bottom. So what we're gonna do is our start is gonna be zero and this bottom number for the roughing tool path is gonna be, we'll just do 0.4. So we're gonna leave a 0.1 inches uh, of depth that we'll clear out with our finishing tool path, which I'll show here in a second. So as you can see, our bowl and tray bit, this is what it's gonna do. So I'll show you what this is gonna look like. We'll run a tool simulation. All right, so this is, again, just the roughing tool path. So now let me show you what happens to this bottom. Keep in mind this bottom, you see these ridges right here. You can see those ridges. Let's add the finishing tool path and see how this changes. And then we'll go down to the shop and do it all and see how it turns out. So we're gonna do another pocket tool path. And we've already got our bowl and tray bit in here. Had the same exact tool, we're not changing tools. And we're gonna change this step over from 0.37 to 0.07, because then we're gonna keep it right just under 10% of our total bit diameter. The rule of thumb to get a good finish is a number less than 20% of your tool diameter. So again, the first time we did 50%, now we're going under 20%. So we left 0.1 inches. We want to do two finishing passes to get a nice clean finish. So 0 0.05 is half of that. So it'll do it in two passes. We're not taking off a lot of material here. So I'm going to put it at hundred inches per minute and the step over we're taking our bite is less per per pass. So hundred is not, a, it'll have no problem with that. The next part of the magic here is to go over and change our start depth to 0.4 because we want it to start where our roughing pass left off. And we want it to go 2.5, which is our maximum total depth. We're gonna call this finishing, estimated to take 15 minutes. The roughing pass is eight minutes. Let's show the simulation on this. All right, so now you can see, now remember this is digital here. So it's gonna look a little bit different in real life, but those ridges, are virtually gone. All right, so we've got the outside contour tool pass set up. This order over here is really important because we'll go roughing, finishing, and then we wanna cut it out last. So we're gonna save this G-code and head downstairs. The bits I'm using for this project were sent over to me from Bits and Bits. I've been testing Bits and Bits, Bits, so many bits, out for a few months now, and I've been very happy with them. The main thing I've noticed is the bits are staying sharper longer, and that's due to the astro coating that they put on all of their bits. 
For this project, I'll be using two specific bits. The first is the astro-coated white side bowl and tray bit, number 1372. This bit has a diameter of three quarters of an inch and an edge radius of a quarter inch. This radius is what will form the bottom edge of the tray. The second bit I'll be using is my favorite on the market, which is the astro-coated quarter inch diameter short flute compression bit. That part number is 425-CM250. Dash SF. So I'll be using this bit to cut the outer contour or shape of the tray. If you're interested in learning more about bits and bits, I'll leave a link down in the description below for you to check out. All right, so we've got everything set up. Now, again, this first toolpath is gonna be the roughing toolpath. And then once it's all done, we will come back and I'll show you the results of that before we do the finishing toolpath. All right, so the roughing pass just got done. As you can see, we went down to that 0.4 inches. But as you can see, we have these ridges here from the roughing pass. But the advantage is, is that now we can come back and do our finishing pass with a lot cleaner look. You might say, well, Andy, why don't you just do your finishing pass all the way through the profile of your piece? And that would just take way too long because we don't care what this point four looks like because we've got the point one that we're gonna clean it all up. So this gives you the best finish in the shortest amount of time. Remember what I said earlier, the larger the step over, the faster the CNC removes material, the more it's taking off at a time. The tighter the step over, the less it's taking off each time, the less it's stepping over on each pass, thus giving it a better surface finish. So now that we've got down here, I'm gonna let it go and do its finishing passes. It's gonna make two passes, 0 0.05 inches each, Let's run this finishing pass and see what it looks like. The finishing tool path is finished. This is so smooth, no sanding needed. You can see a little bit of tool marks. So maybe with a scotch brite or something, you could clean that up, but like it is smooth to the touch. I just wanted to show you this why I have it on here because I've still got to do the outside contour tool path. I'm gonna do that real quickly and then we're gonna get it on the workbench in some good light, get this tool out of the way and really look at how it looks. So what did we learn here? Let the robot do the work. Yes, it does take a little extra. The finishing pass does take a little longer, but the results are well worth it. I used to try to split the difference and just do one tool path, kind of a mix between roughing and finishing at something like 0.2 step over, but I still had sanding to do and I never could make them look the way I wanted to. And it would end up taking me longer to try to do what the machine could do just with doing a finishing pass. So let me know in the comments down below if this is a brand new technique to you or you've heard about this before. My hope is, is if you didn't know about this technique, now you do and now you're able to save a whole lot of time and enjoy the CNC process a little bit more. If you wanna learn another time-saving technique, check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.